Welcome to the Prog Talks by the Prog Space. Welcome to the Prog Talks, an interview series by the Prog Space, where we will be talking to musicians in all corners of the progressive music scene. Welcome once again to the Prog Talks with me, Uncle Prog. And today I have with me two of my favorite young musicians. It's Chris and Galen from Asur. How are you doing, guys? Really, really good. Really, really good. Yeah, fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> so glad to have you on, you know. And when this uh, interview is uh, released, it's just going to be a few days until your new album comes out <laughs> of Brian and Angel Speaks. It's going to be out on the 11th uh, now. And um, how are you feeling? Are you giddy? Are you excited now? I am. <laughs> I'm, I'm <laughs> giddy. <laughs> <laughs> like it's one so of those just, things um like we always end up saying this but it's just it's been so long it's been a long time coming for this so it's like the fact the prospect that it's actually going to be fully released in like a week yeah. is i don't i don't even i can't even compute that yet <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. such a stupid it's such a stupid question i noticed when it <laughs> left my mouth of course you guys are excited galen yeah of course yeah i mean it it's again like chris said it's been so long to me it feels like it's already been out for years <laughs> yes <laughs> but like no one's heard it so like well you you guys have been living with soon. this music <laughs> right you guys have been living with this music for for a long time it has has yeah. had a long time to gestate so how was the process of getting to the point where you are now you know pe and also people have already had the chance to listen to a, a few singles of the album you have amatoko part one then you had mm -hmm. the jellyfish out run god and the latest one was called the jester who cheated death right so yeah uh, that's right yeah what's uh, what's up with this long gestation period to get the album out um there, there is there is an like there were going to be more singles but we've decided you know what too many singles <laughs> let's like you know like it was a cool idea as well but at the end of the day the even though the, the songs which were also going to be singles are really really exciting it was kind of just like we're a prog rock band i yeah. want people to listen to this album in full it's going to be so much better in context uh, and then you know like people will choose favorite songs or whatever but it's just gonna be so good to like for the rest of it all to come at once i think like we've already dropped the four mm. you, you said so it's nice to think that, it, that the rest of it's coming together <laughs> Yeah, and, and and I have to say, you know, I was lucky enough to be sent to listen to the album before, and and a lot of those, especially those shorter, more like upbeat tracks, are very entertaining on their own. But they really come into you know focus when it's in the whole scope of the album. Oh, really? That's good. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well i guess it it goes with what you say about being a, a progressive uh, rock band right and and the fact that all yeah. these tracks belong together in a sort of a, in a, a whole in, as a whole yeah like i think about i think about how there are some quite long songs we haven't there's no songs on the album which hit the 10 minute mark like past 10 minutes on this oh, album but, you're close. but, but there, yeah there's a couple of close ones but it's weird because like, this is the first time that I sit and think about the tracks and I'm like, there's quite a few like three minute ish songs. And, um, I don't know. I never thought I'd be that guy <laughs> being involved with the three minute songs. <laughs> no, no, but, but, but it's, it's nice. It's, I have to say it's, it's, also adds a bit of uniqueness the fact that you have these like shorter upbeat or like shorter thematic songs interspersed between the the long tracks it, it adds to sort of the story of the album if i can say that you know i want to talk also briefly because you also released another single which is not on the album mistress was released in the beginning of march right so does that mean that mistress is the last music you guys has have, have written really it's it's the last proper song that we've written together, I think. I yeah, think it's, it's the, the most last recent one. one. Yeah. So, like, we we just kind of, obviously, because we said that was, like, such a long time before we released the music, we really just needed to kind of come back 
in a way that we could can we we wanted to kind of like control it a bit more and like although the songs yeah. on the album are like really cool none of them were really ever written with the purpose of being like a return to the scene because we thought it was going to be coming out so much sooner so like none of them really were suitable for that particular task um so we and it was really nice to just write again like galen sending mm. me music and and me working with it as well like it just it was good for us probably it was good for our mental health probably just to actually yeah. write some music before this whole releasing stage um and i'm guessing yeah, I'm, I'm, get- I'm really glad we did that yeah and i'm i'm guessing also that uh since the album has been more or less finished for so long you still you know it's not like your creativity stops there you you still are sort of making new stuff coming up with new stuff and and so i'm guessing you have material that you have been working on while really the album has been all done in a way yeah definitely i mean i'll let you talk again i keep talking oh yeah no it's all good it's all good yeah I mean, quite a lot of stuff just um kind of, like obviously there's new new newer new newer zero. yeah yeah <laughs> um and yeah, there's some other stuff that we've been working on too. Um, don't, I'm not talking about that, but that's that's going to be cool. Yeah, yeah, right. Um, but, but yeah, like there's, we, we sort of have been filling the time, the the long time, in waiting to get this album out with tons of writing. Um, so I'm excited. I'm excited to uh, for some of that to see the light of day too. Um, but that's not important for now. For no. now, it's <laughs> of course not. Brian and Angel speaks. Of course not. Oh, yeah. But a reason why I ask is because for it's for the fans or for people who listen to your music. This is like in the moment. Oh, yeah. It's going to be brand new, <laughs> right? But like you mentioned, for you guys, you're sort of this. You have lived with this music for so long, and now you know you are already not moving on but you're already creating new stuff that that's going to be f- a follow up to this uh, also i want to ask about that that single mistress because it seems related to the album in some way you know the character of the mistress is mentioned <laughs> on the album yeah who is she well i mean like it's really cool that it ended up being about the mistress the the, the single mistress because obviously the the tracks um amiotoko 1 which obviously like refers to the mistress and then as you can guess as another mis- mistress mentioned in Amiotoko part two <laughs> yeah. like that, that's simple deduction <laughs> but um yeah like because those songs already existed and because I've been working on like a novel which involves that character as well it felt uh-huh. almost really weird to be working on a song post writing those songs and that book and then writing it more specifically about that character because like with the stuff previously, the stories came in song form first. Then, then I did the write up as like, you know, literature. And then I, I kind of just tried to make it make sense. But writing Mistress, we like me and Galen had a very clear idea of that character because it wasn't in a formative stage anymore. Like we knew exactly who she was. So writing about it was very different. Mm. Um, but yeah, very related, very related. Yeah. Yeah. Because I, I found that I was like, this is probably has to be one of the tracks on the album. But then when I got access to the album, I was like, of course it's, this is a new track, but it follows <laughs> on from the story or it, uh, embellishes on the uh, one of the characters from yeah. the story you know I, i'm gonna ask that dreadful full horrible question which i always ask it's like you know at the same time it's 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 helpful for people who don't know you guys and also i find it tells a little bit about the mindset of the musicians and that is how would you describe your music to someone who might not know you galen maybe oh yeah it's uh how would i describe it it's kind of like it's somewhere in between power metal and prog. Um, a lot, a lot of in- influences, um, and we just really want to tell narratives. Because mm. um, a lot of a, a lot of power metal lyrics, it's just sort of the aesthetic of fantasy. Um, not all power metal. There's a lot, a lot more narrative power metal out there as well. Um, but with us, we want to take the sort of fantasy concepts and just write full narratives in those worlds and make them like sort of emotionally relevant sort of songs about stuff, but just existing within those worlds. Um, And 
And musically, what would you like? Oh, musically, this, this, yeah, this, sorry. This, this, <laughs> this, this, um, the sound of Azur. Yeah, so uh, obviously you've got Chris singing uh, just this really out there acrobatic, just, I, I mean, I don't, I don't want to talk Chris up too much, but I love Chris's like voice. It. Just well, this ac- acrobatic I high vocals, very reminiscent yeah. of like sort of early prog stuff. Um a lot of runs and stuff and there's just a lot of a lot of harmony going on um a lot of guitar stuff going on because we both both big guitar nerds of just sort of like dream theater stuff 80s stuff a lot of the modern shred stuff um and we just sort of and also a lot of iron maiden yeah. and we just sort of mix all of that together with like a lot of the more old school prog sounds like like sort of genesis kind of sounds mm. and just everything just everything we love just all it all just comes together into our sound, which is just sort of very exuberant, colorful, melodic prog. And yeah. yeah and s- s- we'll have, we'll have sections of songs that are just sort of, you know, just getting story across, just getting, you know, fun choruses across just whatever. But then we'll also have sections where we just go off and do our own sort of instrumental thing. <laughs> we, we always try and like fit it, weave it into the narrative of the song though. Like if, yeah. if something's happening in the song, like there's a bat- a battle or whatever, <laughs> we just try and make like that a, yeah. a musical statement to sort of get that across um, with the instrumentals. It has to be reflected in the, in the music, right? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, so that, that's kind of what we do. And it's very, it's, it's very sort of um, like, obviously a lot of a mo- modern sort of music by young musicians is kind of very video game. Uh, soundtrack influence as well yeah that's yeah. in there a lot um all those sort of synth sounds and yeah like the, the, it's quite quite a lot of mixture of old and new in terms of sort of production style yeah I, I, chris I, is a massive fan of pop production and just a lot a lot of new styles of production but we're also massive fans of just sort of like old school 80s guitar sounds and just sort of like really raw takes um, I think, where you can I, just sort of Yeah, I, th- I think hear. that's a part of the, the genius of you guys, really, because I remember when I discovered you, it was around the release of the Red Tail EP in 2018. And <coughs> it I, I was like instantly blown away by how unique you sounded, like the 80s influences, obviously, the, the 70s prog with this modern, you know, inspirations or elements added to it. And uh, I want to ask about the the video game stuff, because, of course, when you think video games, you think like modern stuff. But at the same time, a lot of those video game sounds are 80s sounds, like from early video games, right? Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Like, I think I think there's something to be said about like when you even when you go into like a a really really basic like MIDI sound set and exactly. you find like some some of the most default sounding like woodwind parts or like just really really you know like the synth sounds which are on every single keyboard in the world um, and you kind of some of them you can really liken to those old kind of like. 8 bit games like which just always sound like just noise just like yeah. <laughs> melodic noise because they're so far from the instrument that they're meant to be and there are some like sweet spots where they almost just trigger like that reminiscent i don't know like i i love jrpgs we both do and like yeah. there's, there's a lot of g- games um like like my favorites are dragon quest games where the sound sets are obviously not real orchestras and they're yeah. not terrible but they're not amazing um and i think that if you are into that kind of stuff, it like certain sound choices might actually trigger that kind of, you know, that, that nice reminiscent feeling. I like yeah, that nostalgia. I, I, <laughs> I agree. And also it, it, it seems to me that the people who made this music, you know, uh, back in the eighties, nineties, forties games, you know, with the limitations mm-hmm. they had, they had to be very, you know, considerate, very good at creating memorable music in a way that was, you know, meant to be sound, listened to, uh, hour after hour after hour playing this game so so yeah. taking inspiration from that is quite interesting to me uh, yeah, it's incredible what they managed <laughs> yeah. to do back then yeah like, I, I... <laughs> composing composing within those limitations is so so difficult 
especially like like before they even had the delays where you had to manually input delays. Yeah. Like oh, yeah. all that sort of stuff. Unbelievable. You know, let me let me just quickly go back to the beginning of Azure because you know people might not know your background in history, you know, the first album really. Or I guess that was just you, Chris, right? Uh, Dreams of Azure in 2015, right? Yeah, I mean, that was kind of just like, basically, me and Galen met in Brighton um, when we were both studying music. And like, I was writing, I was trying to really fall into, before then, I was trying to really push myself into like a kind of just straight up progressive metal direction. I wasn't really know what I was doing. And I like wrote some music before then. When I came to Brighton, I saw all these people who were just like, Oh, like the taste in music was so broad and people were doing things when you get part of a music scene you start seeing up and coming bands who are all doing their own thing exactly. and you realize you don't have to fit like a dream theater mold or like a you know like you don't have to sound like a band um but i didn't really have any friends in the area when i first moved like the first people i met when i and then i met galen quite soon in and galen was like oh yeah i like Progressive metal too, and we started talking. And he's, Galen saw my Dream Theater bag. <laughs> um, yeah, that's how we met. <laughs> that's, that's essentially how we met. Um, but then, like, just hanging out with Galen, hanging out with other people as well. Like, I was just like, it doesn't have to all just be like, like metal guitar sounds all the time. And like, that was just experimenting. Dreaming, dreaming of Azure was just experimenting, trying to make the sound lighter, trying to have yeah. fun with it, and you know, and. Galen, like you say, like I know I wrote the songs and that, but Galen did really, really inspire me to get that out as a finished product Aww. because Galen made me feel like it was something that we should be pursuing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, we call it like a demo EP almost because it was just kind of like yeah. finding feet as a project. B- because then I would say that Wish for Spring, which came out in 2017, that's really your sort of your first album, real album, then, right? Yeah. 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 Um, and that, that was that. cool. Yeah. Yeah. And what can you tell tell me about uh, Wish for Spring, you know? I, it's definitely the first, like, it's us, you know, making an album which is like got, it's an album length's worth of songs, just trying to cram as many different as your aesthetics into an album mm. as possible. Because like yes. this project, yeah. we were basically just realizing that there were so many different avenues for like where we could take it, like musically, melodically, like, and like what influences to draw from. And, you know, there, there were slow songs, which kind of just felt like pop rock songs. And then there was an 18 minute long song about like gender and sexuality called fairy yes. tale. So yes. you really got the whole spectrum of that. <laughs> but yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I love Wish for Spring. I, I love that album too. Yeah. yeah, so do I. And do you guys feel that uh, it's uh, representative still for Azure or are you fe- do you feel that you have sort of moved out on from that sound? Personally, I feel that that's very like quintessential early Azure. I, f- I feel like there's elements of it that I want to move towards again. Mm. Um. But like at, at the time we we got when it came out, we got like a lot of flack for the drum production, basically, because yeah. it was just like computerized. Well, yeah. Um, because that's just what we had access to. Yeah. Um so like I think we we probably keep the the real drums that we're sort of moving towards having in our music. Well, of and, course, and keep yeah. a lot of like the just the stuff we have been working on on this album um but yeah like there's there's elements that i I, that we sort of are bringing back with some of the stuff we're writing at the moment um yeah i wonder because because i think we 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 went in a little bit of a darker direction for brennan angel speaks yeah um uh because we were sort of at the time we were sort of were, when we were writing that stuff, we were working, we were doing some other stuff musically, um, working on another project. And it was sort of an outlet um, from that project. Yeah. To be so. Sorry. We were, this is just so, we were, bas- we were basically okay. just kind of like someone was coming, <laughs> venting all of our, no our frustrations at the time into a darker sound, I guess. It, and it's funny we say that it's a darker album because then we were like, here's a single, The Jellyfish. <laughs> yeah. but, but I swear it is a darker album. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, well, <laughs> listening to it, it feels like a darker album. The the, the themes and everything also seems like there's as a, a more you know like a a more yeah uh, not melancholic but like there's a, a darker background to the the story there. And uh, but I I wanted to quickly because it came into my mind now while you were talking about the uh, uh, wish for spring. Would you guys consider re-recording? some of the material from Wish for Spring with real drums at some point, or is that just leave it as it is? Is that better? I think the way I feel about Wish for Spring is like, I would love, there are certain songs that I would love to do like an updated kind of like live in the studio version of. Oh so yeah. I, Cause I like, yeah. I want those versions of the songs to kind of just exist as they were, because that's kind of just like yeah. a moment in time in of my course. opinion. But like, it would be really cool, for example, to take a couple of the ones which we like the most, which we think are, like you say, most quintessential to our sound, and just do like a nice couple of videos where it's like a studio performance of those songs, like revisited five or like a few years later. Um, but yeah, that I mean, and with real drums. So yeah, that'd be that'd be really nice. It'd be nice to see yeah. how they sounded properly mm. recorded and produced like that. I would, I would love to love to hear that. Uh, of course, that brings us on to, to 2018 and the fantastic Red Tail EP, which was around the time when I discovered and fell in love with you guys. And and that EP is, you know, one long track. It's for people, it might be considered as a bit of a challenge to listen to a track that's almost <laughs> 20 minutes long. But, you know, what, what can you tell me about the process around writing Red Tail and uh, that EP? I, I honestly think we would literally, we'd come off of Wish for Spring and we were thinking to ourselves, hmm, there are a lot of things which we'd love to do differently when it comes to um, like releasing music. And yeah. we kind of just straight in, straight in, we're like, we're going to release a 20 minute song. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and um, like I had some ideas and Galen sent me some ideas, which were phenomenal. Um, and all I literally, we all, we just needed to agree on a BPM <laughs> oh, yeah. just, just for the main energy. And I was like, this isn't happening at 190 BPM. Then I'm not interested. <laughs> yeah. So, so, so some of the parts I sent Chris, I, I, I was like, 150 beats per minute these yeah. like quite quite tricky riffs and then chris is like I reckon you can do that at 190 i'm i'm, I'm one upping you do it right <laughs> oh, I, was, I was just like no but i had to <laughs> so, so like that that song that some sort of inflicted a lot of practice upon me wow. <laughs> many hours to sort of get my chops ready to play I have, have to I, I have I have to ask then you know is is this song then possible or like is it will it be difficult to perform this live then since you pushed yourself quite a bit with I that mean, not nowadays but then the, yeah. then it would have been very difficult um we the few times we played live we did play a version of the sort of latter half of it yeah um, which is the more difficult half um just because like you know, you don't have time for a 20 minute song in every set. No. Um, and, but yeah, now, nowadays we can just play that the whole way through and it's just fine. Yeah. Well, we were, we were of course lucky enough on uh, the, the Prog Space online festival to have you guys actually do a playthrough of the, that song for us. But I, I imagine recording that is uh, anyway, is a bit different than actually getting on stage and, and playing the track. But yeah, it's a bit different in some ways. It was pretty cool, like when we sat down and to do our guitar parts, though. And obviously, we practiced the song together before, but we sat down and just recorded our guitar part together and, and filmed that. And it was just so much fun. Yeah, um, it was so much fun. And we, we just did, we did three takes. Yeah. Oh, it was so, I want to do it again. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that was a lot of fun. And we were so thankful that you guys wanted to participate with that. And, you know, yeah, I think it's going to pop up on screen now. So pop over and, and watch that if you're, if you want to check out, because that's an amazing, funny, energetic, uh, you know, performance of Red Tail. So, well, okay. That brings us up to 2021 and the release of uh, the new album. And uh, I, I want to mention, you know, you you worked with uh, Gareth Mason, known from Novena, yep. and sliced the cake on the production 
uh, side of this album. Uh, how was the, that experience and what did they add to that? the sound of the album, would you say? A lot, to be fair. Um, like, it was very much a situation where Gareth said that they'd come and help with the the drum engineering because we had a lot, of, we had basically the whole album in like a pre broad form anyway with a lot of the takes and everything ready recorded and I'd, like I'd done some demo mixes for most of the songs. But um, we were there and Gareth was doing the drum engineering with us and Sam was recording the drums and Gareth just me to one side and said, how do you feel about if I just mix this album? <laughs> and I was like, yeah, all right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was like, you know what? Fine. Like, because I, I've not got much experience with mixing live drums. So Gareth was always going to have to take that, that role. Um, so honestly, if I think that sometimes when you're working with like a whole drum kit of mixing, you may as well be in control of everything that's happening around it because a drum kit is like, you know, as instruments go, it's got to be one of those ones that takes up as most, the most frequencies, you of know, course. so you've really got to make sure that you know what's happening everywhere. If you're, if you're doing a drum mix, which means, yeah, like mix the whole thing. <laughs> and yeah, it made everything very different to wish for spring, how wish for spring sounded. I'm kind of happy that it, like in some ways it really made the, the album a more guitar driven album. Like it was always mm. going to be, because there are more electric guitar parts throughout. Yeah. Uh, the way that Gareth mixed them and also Gareth encouraged us to get some extra takes from Galen and some extra ways of recording the guitar takes as well. And it just really beefed up and got a much, uh, like a much bigger kind of, like, it just feels like a much more like vocal instrument in the, in the mix. It's cool. And I wouldn't have done it like that. No. So I'm glad that Gareth mixed it. <laughs> I, I, I guess it's, it's a bit like with the, uh you know, writing that, you know, you guys had lived with that music for so long and, and you, it, you know, that was set in one way in your mind. So then having someone from outside listen to it or, you know, read through your novel or whatever, and, and come with some feedback that is probably makes you yourself look at it in a new way as well. Hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm just uh, thinking, yeah. like, it's, yeah, sorry, Karen. Yeah. No, no, just uh, go ahead, Chris. Yeah, it's just, it's weird when you send Chris, obviously, like I said, we had, like, demo mixes, pre-prop mixes for that album. So it's really weird when you unpack all those stems, all of those individual recordings that you've done for a song, and you send it over to someone, and you're like, oh, man, <laughs> here we go. They're going to get into the nitty gritty of it and arrange it completely differently. And you start yeah. getting a bit protective over these things like, oh, no, what if that particular swirly keyboard sound isn't panned 39% <laughs> to the left? Like, what's going to happen? <laughs> but, but yeah, it's, it's yeah. weird. It's weird getting a different perspective, but it's, it's, it makes you realize that it's okay. If you've not done that before, and if, if someone's watching this and they've not ever trusted someone else to mix their music before, do it because it's, Try it, yeah. it's so important. <laughs> and and, and yeah. I guess it, and I guess also the, the fact that he asked to, um, to they. mix your music was sort of a, they, yeah, uh, that Gareth That's asked to, to mix your music was a compliment, right? To you guys. Mm. Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. Gareth's been a great friend of mine for a lot, a lot of years. Um, and it is, it's just so, so great of them because th there's I, I don't think we really would have let anyone else um sort of yeah in into work, your, work with us like yeah. that yeah but because gareth uh, just uh, such a wonderful friend a musician i respect so deeply yeah um i used to when i played with slice the cake for a little time like i, I saw a lot of their process and i was just just blown away by by their musical mind so like i i, I really respect gareth and I, I it was a massive compliment and a massive honor to have them working on it um well uh, so yeah I, so thank I, you I, gareth <laughs> yeah, well thanks. i have to I, I have have to say that uh, the album sounds amazing. So they did a, a, a fantastic job with uh, the mixing mixing of the album. And soon you out there will be able to hear it. So yeah. you, I want to <laughs> move on to the videos because you guys are 
making such entertaining and fun videos and it seems like you put so much work and your heart and everything into the the music videos that you that you have made so uh, uh, one of them you. seemed one of them seemed like you were soon gonna like blow away and end up on this side of the channel can you, <laughs> can you tell us a little bit about the the way you work with the with the videos because you do a lot of it or all of it yourself right well it's, it's mostly me and my partner felix and they just sort of, they, they have helped so much with everything. Yeah. So yeah. I, I just want to be like, Felix, um, they're upstairs and thank you. <laughs> thank you for your help. <laughs> and yeah, it's just sort of been, it's been mostly me and Felix working on the um, production side of the videos. Um, I do, I do mostly editing and they do, uh, they do the color grading and like a lot of the other other stuff and we just sort of share the share the videoing process mm. and yeah we've just sort of um our, our budget's a bit tight for um sort of promo material yeah. so we just sort of had to take on everything we could ourselves and just make it as cool as we could you know yeah and so mistress was great like it was just we were just like well we've got this amazing location near us if we just set up there and and play through the song should be fine and and then i'd like we, we there's a making of video that explains more about the particular day but it was so yeah. windy that day that like the drum kit was blown down the hill uh, it was just completely completely <laughs> ridiculous um but it 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 ended up looking great because it looked yeah like, I agree. we were just suffering against the wind just getting just <laughs> blown off this hill um so that that looked great just because of the wind so we hadn't yeah. we hadn't even anticipated yeah. the wind so it's a pretty good thing that it was for a song where it had a lyric like uh summoning a storm with every breath <laughs> like that was a coincidence <laughs> yeah complete well, coincidence was perfect then <laughs> yeah it yeah. Was. yeah yeah and then the Amiyatoko one video that was an undertaking oh um, yeah i, I can imagine <laughs> yeah cuz chris chris was writing writing this novel um, that's to do with a lot of stuff on the album. And originally a different song was going to be the lead single to the album, but I called okay. Chris up and we were just like, I reckon we should do the, the long song first and we should make a really arty video. Because like we, have, we were planning to do something just a bit more standard, but we were like, no, let's do a completely full-on art video for this yeah. not realizing what we were getting ourselves into <laughs> at all because it was it was a a, a process <laughs> it, uh, it all together it was about 400 hours of work just because we have no idea what we're doing and we just had to figure it out as we went along of course yeah we, we had yeah we, we had ideas of what we wanted to happen in the video but then we just had to work out how we how to make it happen make that yeah. happen <laughs> uh, because we we're not really videographers ourselves so we just a, sort of we worked it out and it ended up having just this very very sort of like 80s 80s tv sci-fi retro aesthetic does, that i yeah. love and yeah. um i love that video so if you want to see uh some some magical <laughs> some magical stuff yeah. check that out if you are enjoying this interview, please head over to theprogspace.com for more reviews, articles, pictures and interviews all about progressive music. You can also find us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. theprogspace.com Well, I'm, I'm very interested in the rich background on the universe you guys have created with uh, for Azor. You know, you talked about the, the novel uh, that you're writing, Chris. So I'd love to know a bit more all over about this mythos. What is this world of Azor that, that you guys are creating? Um, so like the book, um, which I've finished writing is pretty much intrinsically linked to the character who is like the protagonist of the Amiyatoko one video. Um, and that character is the main focus of that entire book. And it's kind of just like 
without giving too much away, you kind of start off with that character, like you see in the video, completely matted up with overgrowth, which you don't even know how long it's taken to build up. You don't really know much about it, which is nice because it's like that in the book as well. It's complete mystery. Um, and basically, after an encounter with the mistress, who you see in the video, um, basically, like whatever memory that was lost um, kind of starts coming back. And as the memory comes back, all of these pieces fall away. And basically, you have your, your main character, who is called Lou. Um, and the, the, the book is essentially about Lou taking on, um, or firstly, taking on a role given to him by the mistress, um, which is not a very pleasant role. Um, and mm. like in the lyrics of Amiotoko 1, like the first thing that the mistress really says is like, would you kill the river sprite um, in exchange for your soul? Because Lou is uh, essentially cursed. And yeah, so that's uh, that's a lot of what the book's about. And then after that whole task kind of comes to its, its conclusion, um, Lou ends up exploring some other parts of the world um mm. and it's yeah it's it's very much uh like high fantasy in the sense that there is a lot of history and there are a lot of different time frames which will be covered in as your songs so it's not all just set in one time and it's very much um like fantasy rather than like science speculative fiction kind of yeah. things because it's yeah it's very much n no technology only swords <laughs> 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 but um but yeah like the, it's very much like I'm a, I'm a huge Michael Moorcock fan. We both Ooh. are, um, and like yeah. So there's a lot of um, stuff which maybe is a bit more avant garde because I know that some people are quite into their Tolkien, which is very cool fantasy, but it's also a very like it's not it's it's it basically tells you what's going on all the time, whereas uh, like Moorcock is a lot more vague um yeah. and a lot more wacky sometimes and i i think that that's something which we like to draw from because it's quite fun to recreate those kind of those kind of moods and those imageries like with music because <laughs> like if you're doing something really weird with music then you kind of want it to be telling a weird story which you couldn't yeah. get across with words so, i have yeah, to say just, yeah. yeah i have Sorry, to camera. say that's that's very interesting because you know i i was i'm looking at my question list here now and you know i was I, i'm gonna read this almost like verbatim to you guys because i said to you know what, what are the inspirations of other literature and games on on, on the mythos of azure and i and i wrote i i feel there's less of a traditional fantasy thing going on like tolkien or what i call D, &D fantasy and more of a darker and earthy nature-based fantasy um, and i said and i wrote uh, think Le Leguin's Earthsea or Moorcock's Elric comes to mind. You know, sprites yeah. and druids and stuff. Which so are you like both awesome, by the way. Like uh, Earthsea stuff is amazing. Yeah. Um, and obviously big Moorcock fan. So yeah, and like, it's just, it's so exciting that once we started telling people that this is something that we were incorporating into our music, like a lot more people resonated with it than I expected. Um, because you expect a lot of people to be like, oh, all right, you're kind of going on on that weird stuff now. Yeah. <laughs> but it turns out everyone kind of likes that. So people um, like I'm weird and people are weird. So <laughs> true. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so you're dead on right. It's it's very much more in that kind of like it's a it's like you say, it's a bit earthier and a bit stranger. But there's there's a lot of there's a lot of like space to have fun and be like colourful and flamboyant while still exploring the darker areas of fantasy. So yeah, I think I think it's a good place to start. I agree. Uh, yeah, I'm glad I'm glad that comes across. <laughs> I'm glad that comes well, across. It, it does. It does reading the lyrics. I sort of got this. There's definitely fantasy, but there are, are many kinds of fantasy. And your kind type of fantasy, like style of fantasy, is something I haven't seen explored so much in music. You know, you have a lot of knights and dragons and stuff like that with power metal that we mentioned earlier, but this is sort of a more earthier, a more, you know, spiritual side of fantasy. And if you ever need a druid or a, a wizard for a video, I'm available for all kinds of wizarding work. Excellent. <laughs> I want to ask you about Red Tail. might take you up on that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just let me know. Yeah. Trying and to I, get him involved in the Azure law. <laughs> yeah, I would, yeah. I, would love, I would love that. But, you know, Red Tail and also Wish for Spring is are some of those songs also a part of this mythos? Are they, mm. are they, yes. are, do they feature in the world of, of Azure? 
Absolutely. Yeah. Um, Red Tail is a really good example because obviously Red Tail, you get told all about this character, all about the tragedy of this character, and then the departure of this character. And yeah. you don't get any explanation as to why this character exists or where it no. went. <laughs> no, no. So um, I'm glad that we left that so vague because there is there is more origin to come, obviously, because I love the character. Obviously, it's, it, Red Tail is inspired by a lot of things which already exist, but obviously the origins of Red Tail are up to us or to explore. <laughs> and, yeah. and and recently as well me and galen spent a good long like like up till five o'clock in the morning oh yeah session figuring out like because obviously all great fantasy <laughs> like narratives start to finish there is always some kind of cataclysmic ending exactly um, which we which we probably won't have to deal with musically for years but we just wanted to know what was yeah. happening um to make a framework spent, like we spent hours with pieces of paper written down to the point where you couldn't even understand what we were writing, trying to figure <laughs> out some kind of like metaphysical paradox we'd created with what happens to Red Tail. I love yeah. it. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, most people join a band and they just want to make fun music and rock yeah. out. And like, it's like it's five in the morning and we're like, we've contradicted physics once again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, I, I I love that take, and I love I think that's uh, part of what attracted me to your music and your Delorean as well. It seems deep. It seems something to explore, and you know, as a as a lifelong tabletop role playing game game master i know about those sitting up until five in the morning with friends and <laughs> working on stories and generating your so i can totally see the fascination and the, and the the enjoyment in in that you know uh and, uh you know, also, I wanted to, to to ask you then about this power metal, because you said power metal in the beginning mixed with, you know, more more 80s and 70s prog and whatever. But also this, uh, this uh, fantasy take then, which is quite different than, than power metal. So where does the inspirations come from, from this? You mentioned more, Kok, you know, and I know anime and manga. Is that something also mm -hmm. that, that goes into your... And games, right? Computer games. Yeah. God, it makes us sound like such a mismatch. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think we just, we just like, me and Galen, like always, since, since we've known each other, just always been constantly interacting via art that we like, always yeah. talking about games that we play, like shows that we want to watch. Like, I, I remember, I specifically remember at one point, like going up to work on part of Red Tail with Galen and going up and saying, you know what? I can't believe how much media you consume. And because you were telling me about some, some particular thing you were listening to at the time. And it was just so out there that I was like, where does that fit in? But I love yeah. it. Oh, that. Yeah. I remember that. <laughs> you know what I'm but it was important. It was important. <laughs> yeah. I think, I think it's just when you get yeah. that, that transfixed by all kinds of art, you just yeah. start getting greedy. You get greedy and you want to just borrow it all. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. And, and it like visual, matter, yeah. visual art as well, it's, it's been a recent thing. Um, mm. Just sort of like fantasy art. Me and Chris have just been on, on Instagram because we've just been messaging, messaging each other there a lot more recently. Mm. And usually how I start a conversation with Chris these days is I just scroll Instagram for a bit on the fantasy art tags, find a really good dragon, send it over. And I'm like, <laughs> all right, we need to sort out band stuff today. <laughs> <laughs> what is this? That, that, that's how I summon. That's how I summon you. It's the I only way. I, and, and yeah, so and like just just looking at all this, all this art, all all different kinds of art is just it just really, really helps us get in the mindset. Of of just making this music, um, yeah. I have to say that I I, I recognize so so much of my you know my me and my own friends in this you know the fact that you can get so inspired you you see this fantastic imagery fantasy imagery or whatever and your mind starts racing you know what is the story behind this what is all these these details and I remember my friend said said a few years back which I guess also goes for you guys he said you know I know I love being a nerd because I always have something to look forward to. <laughs> That's really so cool. true. <laughs> it's so true. You're speaking our language right now. Yeah, like, I think I, I. It's especially when because we have such a cool outlet for just making music and and doing this stuff. 
like if you get inspired by something, your mind just goes like a thousand miles an hour, and you the next thing you know, you've like incorporated this silly drawing you've seen into all kinds of music. Like you're like, what would that work like as songs? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's hard to explain. In, yeah, e- even with the anime stuff, like the in- the intro to Red Tail sort of manifested because at the time of making red tail i was really fiending an anime i was just listening to watching sorry listen get it all mixed up i was just watching so much anime at the time i think i was watching shirabako which is some anime about people who make anime and like just <laughs> some, something about the yeah something very meta and something about the theme tune there, there was just like some minor seven chords in there and i was like I really like that. So I just, uh, j- just like started playing around with those voices, like sort of higher up on the guitar. And that, that, it, that first riff that comes into the third section of Red Tail, the one that's like, that one, um, that's where that comes from. Hmm. And it, there's always just some, there's always something that sort of inspires a sound. Exactly. Um, there's a sound on um, the song of Brian and Angel's Beaks, um, this little acoustic guitar sound. That Chris makes and <laughs> that just has such an obscure origin. Oh, do I tell them? It was you can tell. And you should. I, I'm. It, can't leave me it hanging. It was so difficult. It was so difficult to notate because it was just such such an obscure sound. Because uh, like I had to notate the whole tab book, and I was like, mm. Chris, what is this? <laughs> took, took forever mm. to figure out how to make this sound, but it makes sense when Chris finally told me where it came from. <laughs> <laughs> right but you're gonna have to bear with me on this because like do you ever, i don't know if you know much about like tower defense games of course yeah but, but like so there's like a classic you know when you're at school tower defense game like there was called uh flash elements td like the original one and um <laughs> on like level 21 i think it mm-hmm. was yeah because every seven levels is a flying level <laughs> um level 21 <laughs> Sorry, I've played this. It's such an easy game, but it just feels really good to play it. Um, but <laughs> level 20, I think it's level 21. Don't check, don't check. Um, <laughs> but there's one of the creatures. So every time a new creature comes around the, the board, they have like a little, you know, sprite sound that yeah, kind of represents yeah. that creature. And then once you start blasting them, they just make that noise a billion times and it gets quite raucous. Um, <laughs> but there's one creature um, and it's the albatross. Um, which I immediately obviously associate with nautical things in general. Of course, right? yeah, yeah, naturally. Yeah. And um, the, the albatross ha- kind of has a sound that's like, like that. I can't really do an impression. It kind of, it's like, but it kind of hits this kind of harmonic when it goes up to that, that note at the top. And it just kind of sounds so distinct. <laughs> um, and I remember when I was working on the acoustic guitar parts in like, a, it's a weird tuning, but it's like, there was still like high notes on the strings, but it's dropped down to C um, on the lower end. But like, I was just messing about trying to get the sound in after the co- first chorus of this, of this song. And I was just fiddling about and my finger hit a harmonic by accident whilst I was moving one of my other fingers. And I was like, no, it sounds exactly like the albatross, it's, it's the albatross. from Flash Elements TD on level 21. <laughs> um, so, and I was like, but immediately my brain was like, this song yeah. is so nautical. It's so much like the song literally begins and ends with these waves rolling in. And later on, there's kind of like this trap beat sound that's meant to like represent kind of like the creaking of a boat because the yeah. trap beat's not gridded. It's not gridded. It's just doing its own thing. And like the fact that prior to this like non gridded trap sound boat creaking, the fact that there's this guitar part that just sounds like the albatross from Flash Elements TD, it don't, it won't work with the fans or listeners because they don't, might not have that reference point, but it satisfies me. Exactly. Because <laughs> <laughs> it just gets me one closer to being, like to smelling the brine, you know, to, to exactly. seeing an albatross fly by. <laughs> that's exactly the kind of deep cuts I'm looking for here. <laughs> so that's, that's amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. You know, um talking about your the setting and the world and the mythos of uh, Azure is one thing but then you have sort of the musical side of it which is is definitely falls in the progressive side of music so uh, mm. i wanted to ask you uh, what is your inspirations when it comes to progressive music what bands do you listen to what was sort of your first love when it came to the genre and of course i'd like 
I'd love to hear a little bit about your love for Iron Maiden as well, which I personally consider somewhat of a progressive band, at least on some of their their albums. Yeah, I mean, again, okay, do you want to go first about prog stuff and then I'll attack room with Iron Maiden afterwards? <laughs> that sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, for me, I came to... I came to forming a musical identity kind of pretty late because my family's very musical. And so when I was growing up, I was just exposed to just all sorts of incredible stuff, just like amazing blues music, amazing, just like jazz music, all this just amazing stuff. And then my brother, um, who's a drummer, he who's also on the album. He's on the song Cup of Poison doing the percussion. Oh, really? Um, mm. Yeah, he's, he's, he's awesome. I love my brother. Um, but yeah, he, so he, he got me into funk music, um, quite before I even started playing guitar, just into Funkadelic, into Brothers Johnson, into yeah. just all of it. Um, and so that, that and grunge was like my sort of like early musical things. But then around when I was like 16, started playing guitar, I had this friend called Sam who got me into all the eighties shred stuff. So Joe Satriani, Eric yeah. Johnson. Steve Vai, all Steve that. Vai, yeah. And then I happened to jo- upon John Petrucci. And I was like, hang on a second. This is, this is that same kind of stuff on the guitar, which I loved, but in the context of a song rather than yeah. like a, a virtuoso showcase. More of a and band I was like, wait, you, you, you can just do that in the middle of a song. What the hell? Um, <laughs> and I'd never really like gone back before then to listen to like any of the, the other prog stuff. Cause like, my family's not really wasn't really too keen on prog at the time, so I never really heard it when I was younger. Um, but like hearing John Petrucci and Jim Theater, I was like, I need to I need to find more prog. So I, I just immediately just started consuming as much as much of it as possible, like all the yes stuff, all the rush stuff, just just everything, and the, and yeah. going forward towards like the prog metal stuff, like all the Mischuggers and Animals as Leaders, and exactly. when, when all that was happening. Um, and yeah, I just just furiously consumed all of that. And then later I, I, I didn't get into Genesis until like fairly recently. Chris got me into Genesis because <laughs> my, my dad was always like, Oh, Genesis is so boring. So I was like, I guess I shouldn't listen to Genesis. That's the boring one. But Chris was like, no, no, you got to listen it's to not. Genesis and show me trespass. And I was like, this is the best. Yeah. This is just, I, and and now Genesis is my like my number one favorite classic prog band. Just so good. I love I love Duke. I love Fox. I love I love all of that. Yeah. Um, Duke is Chris's Chris's yeah, Duke, favorite. Duke is my and, favorite. Uh, that's fun. <laughs> my favorite. It, it's it's either Trespass or Fox Trap. But yeah, I, I just love that so much. Um, yeah. So yeah, that's that's my that's, those are my yeah. sort of more progressive influences. I see. And you, Chris. Yeah, I mean, like, summarize mine quickly. Like, I obviously, like, I'll go into Iron Maiden because I was brought up listening to a lot of Iron Maiden. But um, the other one for me was mainly Genesis. Like, and then Genesis was my fork into listening to other stuff. So when I finally came across a band like Dream Theater, I was already deep into Iron Maiden and thus some other metal bands of different eras. And I love Genesis. So when I kind of heard stuff which was, you know, much more synth oriented, but still like a metal band. I love high vocals, all of that stuff. And I coming together and I kind of like Galen says, once you hit dream theater, they're a really good band to kind of immerse yourself into prog metal because then there's so many other bands, which kind of, you get, you had to explore after dream theater, like, and obviously liquid tension experiment. You're just like, okay, Mm -hmm. well that's related. (laughs) And then you check out bands. Like I know Galen's huge fan of symphony X as well. And and I listen to some symphony X and stuff like that. And yeah, there's just so much variety and it's, yeah, I, it's, it's quite, it feels quite like a natural progression. Once you like guitars and metal and, but you also like keyboards and you like prog, it just, you've got so many avenues to explore when it comes to listening to it. Um, but, but for Iron Maiden, for me, I have like just, it got to a point where I, I think I remember just constant, like consuming Iron Maiden, consuming Iron Maiden, just knowing all the words, singing along, just like it felt like a job because like my family list, <laughs> I made my dad's a big Iron Maiden fan. I just knew it all. It didn't even feel like I, I didn't feel like I was a fan. I just felt like I was just part of that community. Yeah. <laughs> and then it hit me at like 
when I was like 18 or 19 one day, I was listening to some Iron Maiden <laughs> and I was like, man, I love this band. Yeah. <laughs> um, and yeah, from then on, like I've just kind of let that like really multiply. And like, I was thinking about it the other day, like I can't tell people what my favorite album is anymore because I'll say something and then I'll immediately decide that there is no answer. But yeah, Iron Maiden, like you say, I, for me, are a really progressive band in the sense that they don't, they they only use a very limited amount of like ingredients, if you will, and yeah. yet they still somehow manage to come out. Like this is a band who will start, you know, sixty to seventy percent of their entire discography in E minor, you know, and and yet somehow they'll always find a way to go somewhere else. Exactly. Like especially on after the two thousands as well. Like some of the stuff that happens, I find is quite underrated. Is in in like Matter of Life and Death. Some of the things that they come up with that album, nearly every, I think. Every single song except the last track starts in E minor on mm. that album. Every single song apart from the last one. And they all sound completely different. And they all have the same instrumentation. It's not like they do like random synth sounds or anything. Like, no, it's very exactly. much like that, that lineup, those sounds, that voice. And yet somehow to me, all those songs are remarkably different and important to me. And I just, that, that blows my mind. And that's not even getting into the other things I appreciate about them. But yeah, somewhere no, I, alone, I'm just like... I, I agree with you. You know, uh, that's, that's also probably my first love of, you know, you know, I have some bands like when I was very young that en I enjoyed, but the first one that I got a real, you know, I felt a real connection to was Iron Maiden. And then I also mm. came to this point what, that you mentioned okay. when you were like 18 or 20 or something where I sort of started listening to them again, but with a different mindset. Yeah. And, you know, so for me, it's the same. I can't tell you what my favorite is, but I have a, I, I put Somewhere in Time and, and Seventh Sun very high wow. on my list of, of, and I think those albums are also very representative of the progressive sides of Iron mm -hmm. Maiden. So, Seventh, Sun, so. Seventh Sun is a gorgeous album. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, like to summarize that for me, it's just like, it's funny because when you're younger, like all of the young people who like Iron Maiden, they're like, yeah, run to the hills, like number yeah, of the exactly. beats, trooper. Yeah. And you come back to it and you're like, man, Iron Maiden's lyrics and like vibe is so different to any of the other bands in that genre. Like when people talk about big metal bands, I'm just like, you know what? That's a special band. That's a special band. And you've also done a few covers of them, right? Because I remember your, yeah. your Infinite Dreams cover, which I find found beautiful. So... Thank you. You know what? There is a secret Iron Maiden cover, which I'm not telling you this because I'm going to put it anywhere yet. I'm just going <laughs> to tease you with the concept of it. But okay. um, there is one uh, we did, A Stranger in a Strange Land, um, which Galen played the most gorgeous rendition of the solo for. Oh, thank you. Um, like, and it sounds like, you know, covering an Iron Maiden solo when Galen's obviously capable of playing some of the most incredible things ever. Like, it doesn't sound like technically challenging or anything in comparison, but I don't know. That song has to be played by the right people. And I usually get frustrated by yeah. people covering Iron Maiden songs on guitar and stuff. So when Galen sent me um, a recording of that, that guitar solo take, I was like, you get it. You get it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have to say that I, I, would love to, I would love to hear that. So I hope it's going to surface at some point and, and, and we can, we can enjo enjoy it, you know. Uh, Last year, you guys were part of the Euroblast Homecoming Progressive Encounters, and you were also part of the Prog Space Online Festival that we mentioned earlier. Yeah. How was how was that experience? I, I loved being both part of both of those things. Same. Yeah, like that that felt really good, especially because of how trapped we all were, like um, in terms yeah. of performance. It felt like honestly. Doing the the prog space, like doing that that twenty minute thing, is like it feels like one of the best gigs I've ever done. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, I feel that. Um, I don't know if that's me sounding like I'm just nervous to be in there in real life, but it's actually just because it just felt so good and it felt so nice to put something together that we cared about for something that we cared about instead of just yeah. like turning up and hoping we play okay on the day kind of thing. It was like we want this to be good. It's going to be good it deserves to be good kind of thing. And, and the Euroblast homecoming thing was just so much fun. Like, yeah, it so was fun. <laughs> it was so entertaining. I love, I love that your, your bit there it was uh, easily the standout bit for me. <laughs> oh, thank you. And, and that yeah, must have so been much. quite the thing to make Galen, that, that animation <laughs> yeah, thing. It, like, 
that that animation took me about again because I have no idea what I'm doing. Um, <laughs> took me about uh, probably forty or fifty hours because we only had a week to get everything together. So like the first day, we we got the song done in about two days, um, and then I, I was like, I know what we have to do for the video. <laughs> So we've, we've, we've got Chris filmed on the green screen. I, I, I wrote down all these, all, just this, this little choreographed list. Of, I, I listened to the track, list, little choreographed list of everything I wanted Chris to do. And I was like, like it, it came first. I was just like, so, so just to explain to no one who's seen it, the video is like, it, it's, the conceit is that it's just a JRPG battle. Yeah, and Chris is on battle, this side yeah. of the screen and he's just fighting, they're just fighting different things. And I, I had to just, I, I didn't know what was going to be animated there yet. So I just choreographed, you need to do this, 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 yeah, this, and different this movements in front of the green yeah. screen. Yeah. And then, and then I had this footage of Chris just like waving sticks about and being exactly. handed guitars and just doing all this <laughs> stuff. And then I was like, right. I've got Microsoft Paint. <laughs> time, to, time to go. Exactly. So, yeah, and oh, I had it took forever. I, I made all those little beams and particle effects. I did. I didn't make the backgrounds, and I didn't make the. I made all the text for the box at the bottom, but I didn't make the box itself. I, I downloaded those royalty free, and yeah. then I just started making all these particle effects and attacks and and just mm. stuff happen and I, it's probably the best thing i've ever made honestly well, it, it's my it favorite turned, thing it i've ever turned made out amazing and it was it, it was such a, a fun watch <laughs> yeah, it just felt so funny like when galen turned up because we had me and galen had other plans later that day um yeah. we had to, we had to go and meet um someone in worthing and and like we were we were going to meet up like maybe two hours prior to this meeting. And so I was like, Galen said, Well, you're gonna need a big stick. We know that much. Oh, yeah. Uh, so I was like, all right. So I went, I went, I was living in Littlehampton at the time, and I was beginning to realize that there weren't many trees. Um, <laughs> so I had I went on like a two-hour long walk just to find a big stick to find just stick. for this video. <laughs> and you went on a two-hour walk. I came back. And then when Galen arrived, I was like, look at this stick. Galen was like, it's too big. So we started, <laughs> so we got out a bread knife from my cupboard, one that we used to make to use for bread. It's like, yep. this isn't like some extra knife. Started sawing through <laughs> the stick. This stick. Wood lice were coming out of it. There was bark everywhere. It took about 10 to 15 minutes just to cut this stick in half. Yeah, well, it's because the green screen we have is it's not yeah. very big. Yeah, so, so you like, have to have a short stick. And, and, and if you're watching the video, Chris is sort of crouching down. It looks like yeah. they're doing sort of like a, a like like in a two D fighter that sort of idle yep. animation. Um, but like that was completely functional. Um, it, it was it, it served the purpose of not going outside of the green screen because because if Chris was standing up straight, like the he would have been of, too tall. Top of your head the, would yeah. be out there. Like, yeah. so, <laughs> Oh, but it all good. it all just ended up working, and it's it, I love that video. It's so silly. Um, I like I a, after I after I did it, I was having so much fun doing the pixel art and everything. I was like, I have to stop this. <laughs> I have I because I was like, if, if I carry on, I'm gonna end up. I'm gonna end up getting well, too into pixel art. Well, that's, 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 <laughs> that's 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 dedication. You know that that's dedication. Exactly. You, you know like because. Oh yeah, sorry. I was I was just gonna say because I I I I'm just a complete beginner at it and don't know anything. And I was just like, I don't. I enjoyed it too much, and I was just like, I I'll stop focusing on music if I focus on this. I've got to <laughs> I've got to cut this out of I my life it. now. Exactly. <laughs> well, I I you know uh, I love talking to you guys, and I feel like I already I'm already pushing the. Uh, time my time limit here because i am i'm enjoying this this talk so much <laughs> much so but i i want to want to end up by saying you you know of course the album will be out now on the 11th uh yeah. of brian and angel speaks and you guys probably have some upcoming plans i know you will be uh contributing to something called prog for pert on the 2nd of right. july can you tell me a little bit 
on what's in store for Azur now with the release of the album and, and coming up? Um, I think for us, it's going to be kind of a case of we we needed this album to come out. We wanted to just make it something that we like. We care about it so much. We wanted to come out. We wanted to be highlighted in a way that makes it seem important um, because it is to us. And then following that, now that we're kind of back in the swing of, you know, like all of the motions of being a band that will play live, uh, we, we, we're accepting the gigs, we're taking the gigs that we think that we should be doing. Um, and we're just going to really get back into just creating as much music and involving ourselves with as much art as possible. I'm in a desperate push to make sure that this book that um, I've written gets published. Yeah. Um, because that, like, I'd like for it to be more than just a zero merch, <laughs> but I of mean, course. be pretty cool merch. Um, and like, yeah, I think that it's, it's just going to be nice to not have time limits us anymore. Because like when we were talking about making those videos, for example, the Amiotoko one video, because of the way that things were at the time, we had to do that under such constraints and it was really stressful. Like Galen had to do all that editing in such a short amount of time. Did an amazing yeah, I mean, job, obviously. <laughs> Yeah, you, you and Felix, yeah. like it was. We were, we were pulling. Stressful. We were yeah. pulling. Um, sort of. Felix would be doing it during the night, um, mm. and then I'd be when they went working. to sleep. I'd wake up and I'd start editing. Continue and then when I went working, to sleep, yeah. they'd wake up and they'd start editing. Literally yeah. shifts. <laughs> yeah, we 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 took shifts to get that done because we we didn't have a lot of time, yeah. and it was it was a lot of work. Um, but we, well, we got it done. Well, now yeah, it's going to be so nice to not have to worry about those kind of yeah. those particular deadlines anymore. Well, now the album is is finally coming out. So you know, I want to thank you guys, of course, for being on the Prog Talks with me, uh, Galen and Chris. And it, it was thank so you lovely so much to for talk to us. you. Yeah, yeah, I love it uh, so much. You should all follow uh, Azure on social medias. All the links will be in the description. Uh, and if you haven't listened to their singles or their album that will be out in just a couple of days after this interview airs, then you should absolutely go up. You can find it in all streaming platforms. And of course, you can purchase it from their band camp and get some merchandise, support the guys, you know, I have. And yes. uh, <laughs> so listen to it. Uh Enjoy it, buy it, and thanks for watching and listening uh, to the Prog Talks. Please drop a like and a subscription if you enjoy the material that you're seeing. It helps us a lot and keep spreading that prog love. The Prog Talks, produced by the Prog Space. Main host, Rune Belsvik Reynolds. Produced by Rune Belsvik Reynos, Vanessa and Matthias Kirsch. All graphics and animations by Vanessa Kirsch. Intro theme by Giuseppe Negri. Outro theme by Zack Munovitz. This was the Prog Talks by the Prog Space. See you in a week.